Coach, you've been around Big 12 basketball for a while, and you've recruited in the Midwest. You're a Midwest guy. BYU comes into this conference as one of four new teams to, to join the mainstays. What's the best bit of advice you have for BYU and, and what they're about to face in the Big 12 conference? Well, I, I would just say uh, embrace it, enjoy it. It's a great league. It's uh, You know, I was uh, part of the Mountain West with BYU when I was a coach at TCU. Yeah. So, you know, at that time, we were all working to be the best we could be. And at that time, you know, us, Utah, BYU, were certainly the three that were certainly doing big things nationally, right? And I would just say that, you know, um, I, I was so happy for BYU. Uh, people ask me all the time, you know, what's it like to go out there? I go, well, it's not going to be any fun. I can tell you that. <laughs> I go, they they love their sports. Uh, they love their teams. Uh, they're really good. Um, they do a great job, but they'll be a great addition to the league. And um, so I was excited for um, everybody at BYU to, 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 to be in the Big 12. But I, I will tell you this, um, boy, it is a tough league, and it is a deep league. And so – Different than other leagues that I've coached in, you know, if you don't play close to your best, it doesn't matter who you're playing. If you don't play at a high level, it doesn't matter who you're playing in the league. you got a chance to get beat, and that's different than some other leagues that you can play the bottom and maybe not play your best. And, and that's what you'll find in this league. It's, it's going to be an every-night deal, and, uh, and it's going to be every sport. It's not just going to be one. It's not just going to be two. It's going to be every sport. We felt that in football especially where it's like, oh, there's no automatic wins. You've got to show up. Um, but what is it about TCU since 2011 you know, to now of the growth of the athletic program and women's hoops and, and everything that has led TCU to be in a position to compete nationally, whereas before it was absolutely it was good, but it's another level right now, it feels like. Well, when I left TCU to go to Kansas State, you know, TCU was really growing there. And then when I got to Kansas State, um, this will be my 10th year at K-State, um, in looking at how the league evolved, okay, and looking yeah. at how the league evolved, um, it, it was tough on those early teams getting in. Yeah. Um, you know, Kansas State, they had such a great tradition before I took the job. And um, if you spend time in Manhattan, it's not hard to figure out why. The fan base is very much like Provo hmm. in that it's all in. They're there to cheer on their team, not coming to the games because of the other team. They're there to cheer on, and that's different than some places. So Manhattan is a special place, and, and uh, it is very much like that, or at least my experience has been watching BYU is that the fan base has grown up. They're cheering for BYU, and they don't care who they play. And and uh, Manhattan's a special place that way. Uh, we probably have as good a student crowds as as uh, anybody in the country. Very passionate, very knowledgeable, uh, all in. Um, camps out for basketball. It's kind of old school. It's kind of old Not school now. Not too many now. do that. Do Gonzaga, Kansas State. Yeah, I'm talking. It's old school now. Yeah. It's uh, it's um, it's two days before the game. You know, fraternity guys are coming over there going, it, it's, it's, it's my shift to hold the spot. Yep. And I'm like, what shift you got? He's like, I got the 7 a.m. I'm like, freshman? Yep. <laughs> Pay your dues. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a phenomenal atmosphere, and uh, I think you guys will enjoy coming to Manhattan. Well, I hope you don't enjoy it too much, but yeah. the, we'll, we'll, we'll treat you good, and uh, I've been treated great in Provo. So I've always enjoyed kind of the Bill Snyder, Lavelle Edwards, like uh, yeah. similarities in that way, uh, met iconically in the Cotton Bowl in 1997, but – yeah, there's some similarities there with Kansas State and BYU. You know, our, our, uh, my wife and I's son played for uh, Coach Snyder mm. um, a year and then played for uh, Coach Kleiman. So um, um, 
not knowing Lavelle Edwards, but watching from afar, I can see that Coach Snyder, very organized, very disciplined. Um, our son would say that, yes, it was exactly how you see it from the outside. That's the inner workings of that. And now Chris has done such a great job with the program, taken over for, for Coach Snyder and uh, um, been, been really fun to watch. Uh, Avery Johnson, kid. Oh my gosh! Oh, the five he put on a touchdown? show the other Holy night. mackerel! Unbelievable! Yeah, he uh, the uh, hair too. He's got a little. Uh, uh, he, he, he's got a little sunshine uh, look to <laughs> him. Uh, um, there, there have been some social media references, but uh, uh, we're lucky to have uh, we're lucky to have two really good quarterbacks. But uh, Avery put on a show the oh, other night, gosh. and uh, that's fun to watch. Coach. You finished last year ninth. You're picked to finish fourth as the conference expands to 14 teams for one year and then to 16 uh, when we get to next year. But what do you make of why your team is making that five spot jump in the term in in, in the eyes of, of the coaches that are voting in this poll? Well, I think it has to do with uh, Aoka Lee coming back. I think you know you go last year if if uh, Lee doesn't announce. Uh, you know, her injury occurred late summer, so we found out August 21st that she wasn't going to be able to play. So there was no recruitment or ability to, to you know, replace that, right? Um, and I think just the, the respect the league uh, had for her impact, you know, it's uh, – you know, probably Chris Kleiman said it to me best when uh, he called me after she uh, announced. He goes, you know, you just lost, like, your best offensive player and your best defensive player. And he and he was comparing it at the time to Deuce Vaughn. And, oh. and, you know, and I go, yeah. I said, you know, everybody looks at the points, but she's one of the top defensive centers in the country. So I think it's a recognition of that. And, and I think that um, the fact that um, – we did have three season-ending injuries um, of talented players, and they're all coming back. And then we, we did some good things a year ago. We just weren't consistent enough. Sure. Um, so I don't know. You know, preseason polls are, are – they're always um, – I, I, to me, they're a little bit like reading your horoscope. Um, you know, they might be fun to look at, but uh, I, w- I wouldn't. Put, I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock in it. Yeah. Well, I, um, I mean, I understand the Ayoka Lee thing, and then throwing Gabby Gregory, and it's like you, sure. you, you have such a solid foundation. Eleven to begin returners there. helps too. Yeah. People like familiarity, probably. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And and you know, I think that anytime you have new teams coming in. Um, People don't know how good those teams sure. are, you know, so the unfamiliarity puts people when they vote. So I don't know. I think we've got a good team, though. I will say that. I think that uh, I think we've got a good team. I think it's a team that's uh, showed me that they understand how to work. It's a team that shows me that they understand some big picture things differently than maybe in years past. So uh, I, I am incredibly optimistic about this team. Give uh, BYU fans a sense of what it's going to be like January 27th when the Cougars roll into Manhattan to take on Kansas State. Well, you know that schedule better than I do. I'm trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out when our exhibition was. Um, <laughs> January 27th. Huh? Um, well, I hope it's a team that's on a 15 game winning streak. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> um, you know what I hope is uh, from a year ago. What I hope is that uh, uh, that this team is a, a tough defensive team. Because we were pretty easy defensively last year. We, we did not defend things very well. Um, I hope it's a team that hasn't quite hit its stride, but is starting to show uh, even more so that they're, the, the improvement. Because we all coaches, we want our team to really hit our stride in that late February, March time frame. But you're winning games while maybe your best basketball is still ahead of you. So hopefully that's the kind of basketball you're playing. And if we're not playing that good, I hope we're tough enough to win when we don't play our best because that's the key in this league is that you got to be able to win when things don't always go right. Because there's going to be... Um, there's going to be some nights where you're down 10 to nothing to maybe a team that hasn't played very well just because they're a talented team, and um, uh, that's a big one of the bigger challenges of this league. What's your biggest concern? Because we mentioned how many returners you bring back, and maybe you just answered it in part, but what's your biggest concern with this team? Because you have so many reasons to feel confident about yeah. this squad. Well, I think two things. One, um, 
the cohesiveness is harder to get to the more depth you have. So how many reps can you get with each? And, you know, those, those things concern me that, that we're getting enough reps with the right players. And um, so that that's one. And that's why I think I've got to be patient knowing that that's what's occurring. Um, I think the other thing is, is that guard play is such a critical aspect of winning games. And this was a team uh, we didn't win. We didn't win a road game last year. So you got to start with that one because you got to prove that you can win on the road. Sure. And um, uh, we had as good a wins as beating Iowa early in the year, but yet we weren't tough enough. We didn't defend well enough to do some thing, good things on the road. And uh, we've got some early challenges that um, we need to show that uh, that's not going to be the case this year. We play Arkansas Little Rock right away. They won their league. We go to Iowa. Um, so we'll get every opportunity early in the season to show that uh, we're different that way. Coach, it's always great to catch up with uh, a Kansas City Chiefs fan and, more importantly, an Andy Reid fan. Okay, Hard not to be an Andy Reid fan if you're, uh, <laughs> if you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Uh, yeah, he's pretty good. And uh, uh, I know you guys are proud of him. Uh, uh, he's pretty proud of being from BYU, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He makes that very, very public. He does. Yep. He does. <laughs> he's he does. a likable character. Yep, yep, he is. He is. Uh, I hope he stays for a long time. Uh, I hope he coaches till he's 80 because uh, I think him and Mahomes could be about as good as they get uh, okay. in the NFL. Could be an all-time connection, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, we appreciate the time and the insight into your team and looking forward to uh, the battles in Manhattan and Thanks, Provo. Jeff. All right, guys. Welcome to the league. Thank you. Thank you.